Hey, it's Joe at Swing This. Today we're going to talk about the difference between doing Turkish get-ups with a fat bell versus a kettlebell. This is the same weight. These are both 40 kilogram kind of bells or weights. So this is 88 pounds and this is 88 pounds. So here, you know, first start with why I think a fat bell is absolutely wonderful for Turkish get-ups and control. So, top down here with this guy over here. Get the back. Now, here's the thing. So, a lot of people say, or they think, that because this weight is evenly distributed, that it makes it easier. Okay? That's the, exactly the opposite of what it is. So, until you've had your hands in one of these things, here's the difference. Now, I'm going to pivot around so you can see. Thing is, with this weight, if it goes any direction quickly, other than straight above, we rotate, lift, and just get back down and show the bottom part. Now, if I cross over, here's the thing. If this weight deviates and goes forward, I'm not going to be able to keep this. I'm not going to be able to control it. Put it that way. So, I believe it has to have much more control with the fat bell. Okay? So now, here's why. Take the same weight. 88 pound kettlebell. Now, immediately, I always, I'm going to turn side with you. I always have this weight. I can rely on this weight to be back this way. That means I can always keep this engaged going forward. Right there. So I know that this weight is always going back because that's where the mass is. Okay? So now yes, it will rotate. It will rotate quickly. So yes, you're going to work on a lot of shoulder stabilization, but I know it's always going this way. I can count on that. So when I turn over here, cross the weight. It's always there. I can keep it that way and activate it, pecs, tricep, etc. So, big difference when you're going to press this, I've shown on a video prior, that when I go to press the fat bell, I don't have the, there you go. I don't have the kettlebell resting here. Now, for Turkish get the heavier you go, the longer you're doing things, the more repetitions. Here's the thing, the kettlebell, there's pressure, okay? We all know that. The heavier the weight gets, the more pressure, fatigue, strain that you're gonna have on your forearm and coming down across the wrist. I don't have to grip that like crazy. Now, the fat bell, Let's say I have a bruise or something. Um, I'll use his arm. I do have another arm. So now it's literally just a balance. So what happens is it is a little bit harder for me to press that fat bell because any deviation, 360 degrees, any deviation, and I can lose the path of this, okay? So yeah, that kettlebell works on a little bit more internal rotation to keep that weight from going out here. I see a lot of people, and a lot of people that do CrossFit that are doing kettlebell presses out here, very, very similar to a bar path, okay? The kettlebell is meant to give you full range of motion. An 88 pound dumbbell, think about if you're pressing an 88 pound dumbbell, that thing's gonna be this big, okay? Now, you need an 88 pound weight because a lot of it's over here. <coughs> Excuse me. They're all very, very different. And I think the only reason, one single reason that you might not be interested in get using fat bells instead of your dumbbells, because you already have a set of dumbbells and it's costly to replace. 
But there is such a big difference that if you just get one or two fat bells, maybe a medium weight that you use a lot, maybe 35, 52 pounds, and just start incorporating things that you can do, you will see the difference. But anyway, there's the difference between doing Turkish get ups with kettlebell and the same weight fat bell. Um, Rogue Thompson fat bells.